this is Tom from Northwest Trains and I've got my final unboxing uh, for the uh, double O locos for my Christmas haul um, I don't think there's any more tearing up hope not because I've, uh, <laughs> I've got no money left but anyway here's the Midland Pullman train pack so this um, livery is based on the original blue Pullmans that used to run in the late 1960s early 70s um, I forget the class of the logo, but sadly they were all scrapped and um, I think because they were a non-standard design and there was only a few of them that uh, they were just um, weren't cost effective to keep running um, but yeah, it's, so, but it's nice that um, Locomotive Services Limited um, painted up one of their HSTs for um, rail tours and it's nice to still see the HSTs on the uh, main line um, quite a few made it to preservation now, but it still doesn't seem right not seeing them on the, the main line to me. Anyway, uh, so just have a little look. There's no really point in looking at the number because there's only one of these sets around. Yeah, they brought out quite a few just before Christmas, Hornby. Um, there's the Rail Adventure livery, which looks pretty interesting. And uh, I think mean, there's the Great Western Castle sets, so they're like four car sets. So if you only got a small allowance like mine, um, it's probably ideal for you. Right, you just take that cover off here. We've got the instruction manual, which I'm going to have to have a look at. Um, so we've got body removal, uh, dummy buckeye couplings, extra detail parts, and importantly for me, fitting the uh, decoders. Uh, I've got some sound decoders here from uh, Roads and Rails in Leeds. Um, so hopefully they're not going to be too hard to fit. Also, um, one thing I did like the look of, we got built-in speakers to this loco, and working fans as well. So it looks like quite an impressive model so far. Right. So uh, let's see, we can get that out of the box. It's been well wrapped, and you can see the detail on it already compared to the older models just see if I can it's like the old-fashioned packaging we got to push your finger through from behind <laughs> get it out right so this is the motor car cardboard's getting in the way there and there we have the uh, motor car very nice that I like the uh, little uh, pattern on the front the etched grills there the lights look really good so we've got Jeff Drury 1930 to 1999 and we see our motor car number 43046 it's definitely the most look, detailed looking HST I own you can see the uh, fans there so they're supposed to be working again it's a little novelty feature I suppose that you don't really need but it's a bit of fun and it'll be interesting to see what it's like. We also have an extra light up here by the looks of it. Um, so yeah, so you have blanked out the uh, guards window here. Underneath. Right, what I'll do is we'll just get the other one out and we'll uh, compare them. Okay, got both power cards out now. So you can see that's your basic detail pack that we could find in there. In the instructions it had um, more detail parts so I'm not sure there should have been another bag in there or not but um, so we got the name plates and we got the dummy buckeye couplings uh, and that's it as far as you can see I'll just put this box to one side oops so you knock the uh, camera um, let's just have a look at the instructions again According to this, we should have some of these vacuum pipes. So, hmm, unless that's just for certain types of HST, it's a possibility. Um, have a look at that later. Like I say, I never really put them on, so I'm not too worried about it. So, there's our dummy car, exactly the same. It's pretty light, as you'd imagine. Hopefully there's plenty of space in here for the sound decoder anyway, because there's no motor there, so there shouldn't be any excuse. And um, let me just take a look. So this is uh, 
my most recent model of a HST. Just have a look at the top. As you can see, I suppose this is still a Valencia engine, whereas this would be an MTU engine, I'd imagine. That's what I've got in the decoder wise anyway. You can see the front, there's a bit of a difference. The wiper looks so much uh, more to scale on the blue version, I think. Um, like you say, you got that light in the centre of the blue one as well. I'm not sure if that was an added feature or not. Um, you can see the engine difference here on the top. Just have a look here. That's a fair bit of detail difference there. Be interesting to look back at the real thing as well and see what the difference is. So, quite a bit of difference on the top. Let me just put that back in the view of the camera. And the blue one, it almost looks like a um, foreign train, doesn't it? <laughs> and this, this is my very, very first ever model train. So, I've had this for as long as I can remember. And it still works, but this is the original HST the homie brought out. Every train show you'll go to or any toy fair will have one of these for sale. They must be one of the most common locos. Um, it's not worth anything, but I mean, to me, sentimental value wise, it's uh, priceless. So, we'll look at the difference there between the three. In fact, I keep uh, putting it on the way of the camera. There you go. So, very, very basic. There's no, um, there's just literally two headlights on this. You can get upgrades for them, and I'm seriously considering upgrading this, but I'm afraid of whether I'd spoil the original loco or not. Um, but just a ring field motor. Um, but it, like I say, it still works, very basic. So, you can have, I mean, this loco at the time was about £180, I think I paid for it. So this was probably about five years ago I bought this. This was over three hundred pounds. Forget how much. I think they sell up to three hundred and thirty pounds, but I don't think I paid that for it. But when we when we go on about model railways being expensive, you can have one of these with a couple of coaches and a dummy car for thirty or forty pounds. So you know, model railways, like I always say, can be as cheap or as expensive as you want them to be. Um, so anyway, I'm going to have a quick look inside, see if I can get the decoder fitted, and uh, we'll get it up on the layout, have a run with it, so I'll uh, be back in a sec. Okay, I fitted the first decoder, uh, it's probably the easiest thing I've ever done actually. Um, there's the blank and plate there, now with the two decoders I got, um, Richard left me a little note to say the smaller decoder goes in the dummy car. The larger decoder, which is this one, goes into uh, the main loco. You can see you've got a little note here. So, he's made this sort of like foolproof for me. Um, right, so to take the body off, it's just a case of small flathead screwdriver. You've got four screws. So this is the last one. Again, I just use a little uh, pair of tweezers because that's the only fiddly bit. Is uh, once you loosen the screws, is just getting them out. So, and then got to turn the logo back upright again and just carefully lift it off. You can't lift it off all the way because you'll see why now. You just get the front end off. It's a bit fiddly. Here we go. Got the lights attached. So, you just sort of carefully put the body to one side. There's plenty of slack on the wires. Um, so, I'm hoping it's just the same scenario, just a case of take this decoder off here. Uh, sorry, blank and plate there. And we have our new one here. So, it's a lock sound decoder. And also to show, just I'll tell you what, we'll just get this on first. We can. There we go. Right. We just gently lift it onto the track. Now I had my soldering iron and everything on standby, but if we just try this now. 
no soldering required because the speakers are already wired up here so you can see solder there solder there now i'll just turn the sound off again quick i did get speakers supplied to me um so it might even it probably is a better speaker that's, that's in the loco although i've been told there's a pretty good speaker that's been fitted so you can easily just desolder them and solder your speaker in there but i'm not going to bother yet i'm going to want to play around see what it's like first um but yeah provided this body goes back on now without um any glitches it's um quite a straightforward fit and to be honest that's just that's just gone on like a dream and they're uh, certainly the easiest one i've done so all i'm going to do is stick the screws back on and uh, we'll have a little look and play with the sounds so uh, again back in a minute okay just thought we'd go through some of the uh, sounds so um let's start her up Right, and then we got um, high horn, number three, low horn, uh, four buffer clash, We've got five brake application. When moving, so F6, we have driver's door opening and close, compressor 7, and then the exciting one we've got the roof fan, which is 12. We should be able to just see them moving now. I'll do a little close-up of them as well. That's a nice little feature, actually. So, um, I mean, we've obviously got working lights. The only thing I hasn't got, as far as I can see, is um, cab lights. So, um, if you wanted to pick fault, that's the only thing I can find so far. Um, for the for the asking price of three hundred pounds or more. I think, I think you could have squeezed in a cab light. Anyway, so let's turn them fans off. So uh, we're obviously going to have to use some um, alternative coaches uh, for now. But um, I'm going to give it a run in the loft anyway and see how it does. Let me just quickly take the dummy car off here. Uh I've resisted watching videos of the new HST so far because I wanted to sort of get my own opinion. Now you can see it's got pickups on all eight wheels on the dummy car, so it'll be the same on the motor car. But it's this that interested me the most, this uh, new HST coupler. Um, because, yeah, let's go back to the... Sorry, if we just uh, move the camera back a little bit. We go back to my original one <laughs> that that's the couple you used to get so you never had any hooks on this so um occasionally you did get the odd um train losing its coaches so that was the original version now this one was an improvement um I mean, i'm actually missing the hook off this one for some reason but you can see they have uh, altered it again for the better um, we'll soon see but this this one does look better so far that one does look a bit <laughs> sticky outy it, it does work though i can't complain about it this does look a co closer fit so uh, we'll soon find out and uh, if there's any problems i'll be watching other people's videos to see <laughs> if they've had the same issue but again looking at the detail again so we've got all the separately fitted handrails here and um you know it is a basic locomotive in real life so you can't put you know pack that much detail into it but i think it's a great job it's a lovely livery as well i like the uh application to it 
Um, I, I think the top looks really good as well compared to the older models. Whether it's more realistic, I presume it is. I mean, this looks like a, a missile silo off a destroyer. <laughs> so, it's quite funny. But um, I do like the look of the fans and the, the X grills here as well. You know, it's a giant leap forward compared to the likes of this. Um, but again, look at the price difference. You know, this is still good fun and uh, always will be. So, anyway, I'm talking too much again. Let's get this in the loft and... Um, We'll have a little running session with it. Okay, uh, I've given it a good um, half an hour's running in both directions. I'm uh, just coupled it up now to some Arriva Mark III coaches. I know they're not the right coaches, but it's the best I can cope with for now. And the closest matching colour as well, so they don't look <laughs> too bad. Um, the couplers are different heights, as you can imagine. Uh, so I'm just going to see um, how it copes. Hope it'll be okay, just so I can finish the video off with a nice little running session. And uh, we'll see how it gets on. Right, so just come around to the fiddle yard because we had a little derailment before. It's done about four or five laps around here before it did derail. So um, I'm hoping it's not the loco. I think it's just the, the couplers on the on the power cars are lower down than the hooks on the old-fashioned coaches. So I'm hoping that's all it is. Um, I did lower the speed a little bit as well. But um, yeah, hopefully when I get the proper coaches for it, that'll be completely faultless. But I thought that's always a good test of an engine, running them on the uh, on these Orbishi second-hand points, uh, se se second-hand, second-radius points. Um, so, just uh, something to point out. Otherwise, it's absolutely perfect. Um, Running-wise, just put it back on the main line here. And, uh, like I say, I can't wait to get the proper coaches for it.
Okay, that almost concludes uh, this video. I just uh, want to show a few little things that I missed out earlier. Stupidly didn't read the book properly. Um, I was hoping to find a cab light somewhere because in the Hornby instructions, it might just be generic for other locos, but it does mention here a cab light. Now, the numbers are different to what I've got on my paper off um, roads and rails, but uh, let's just check the lights now. So, I couldn't get the cab light to come on, but we do number 19. We've got our extra top light here. I did wonder about that earlier, but I never uh, checked on it. And um, we've also got uh, night mode. So this is where I thought the cab light might come on. Well, no, it just alters the headlights. So I just thought it was worth a mention. Uh, so, just turn that off again. Right. Uh, yeah, so there's no cab light, which is the only disappointment I can think of, really. Otherwise, uh, uh, detail-wise, I think it's brilliant. I really like the uh, the extra detail on the roof compared to the older one. The working uh, fans is a nice little feature. It's a gimmick, but it, it's nice. They do work. And um, running-wise, the motor's pretty quiet as well when you haven't got the sound on. Um, home, we get a, a 10 out of 10 as well for easiness of fitting the decoder like i say it was all all the hard work's done for you just four screws lift the body off stick the coat the decoder in and away you go um so can't fault that if you're more more of an expert you can fit probably fit a better speaker i think the speaker that's in it is pretty good as it is um others might disagree but um yeah uh one of the better models really that i've uh that i've had for for a long time uh, certainly there's no messing around with it compared to the Dapo locomotives although you know I don't want to sound nasty towards them so happy with them um, so but yeah only criticism no cab light for the price I thought they could have fitted that in um, secondly you can't not have coaches with a HST set apart from maybe the um, Rail Adventure livery, you could get away with them not having coaches, obviously, but there's something like the Pullman or the Great Western set, you should at least include two coaches with them. Um, so that's the only criticism, really. I know you've got to pay a lot extra because, obviously, the cost of the coaches, but you, you're going to have to have coaches for them. So, basically. <laughs> anyway, I hope you liked the video, um, and let me know what you think of the model. And, um, like I say, drop a comment anytime. I always... Uh, Always interested to see what people uh, think and their opinion. So um, a big thanks again for watching. Keep an eye out for the next video. Bye for now.